Debt is always going to be an issue. It's not just an issue for the borrower, but also for the issuer. They're always dealing with the prospect of not being paid back. This tends to be fine in a limited scenario. However, over time, as this adds up, eventually corporations can no longer handle the mounting pressure and go bust. This should be an interesting ride. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to talk about what's been happening inside of China. I think it's important to follow the China situation. I did a video recently about their $32 trillion problem, the little secret that they're hiding. All you got to do is dig one layer deep and that information comes right to you. It's important because of China being such an absolutely integral part of the global economy. You have to think about it like that. You have these businesses that exist there and they have been expanding greatly. Look at where China was 30 years ago compared to where they are today. Obviously, if you look 30 years into the future, it looks like they will expand faster than the rate at which we see the United States growing and definitely in Europe. But this growth comes at a price when you expand too far, too fast for too long. We're going to cover some issues today. Two large Chinese borrowers miss bond payments. This was back in February and I wanted to bring it up because it leads us into the next topic. They talk about this, they give you the names of the companies, they tell you exactly what happened. But the only reason I wanted to mention this was simply to give a backstory because this has been happening now for a little while. It has grown, it has expanded. It's not just the one big company I'm going to show you, but just to let you know that in fact in 2018 missed bond payments quadrupled in 2018 defaulted bonds in China you can see that it has grown excessively over the years we'll see where what happens in 2019 so far of course those numbers haven't come around yet we're gonna give some updated information as it comes out but I think it's important to know that this has definitely been expanding of course if you look at the amount of money that we're talking about here it really doesn't you know change things in the grand scheme of things things compared to what's going on in their shadow banking but it's still important because it starts a cascade if you can see how failures work all of these companies are interconnected once one starts going down the next one starts going down has that domino effect or cascade effect i think it's important to understand and to follow you may have heard of HNA Group. This is one of the biggest conglomerates around Chinese company. Well, one of the companies that they control, CWT International, failed to pay interest on a $179 million facility, prompting lenders demand for immediate repayment of the loan. They didn't like what was happening. Look at how many loans do not get repaid. As I said in the introduction, it's fine when it happens once or twice, but if that starts to pile up, then you have a big issue. HNA Group was one of China's most acquisitive companies until it began facing liquidity challenges and pressures from the government. The conglomerate has agreed to sell more than $25 billion in assets, ranging from property to big shareholdings since 2018. Despite that, it still struggles to repay debt. So no matter how big a company is, don't ever think that it has the ability to pay back any sort of debt. Look at this company here as a perfect example prime example of what we can see here as the debt load continues to mount. There are further details in the bottom paragraph, but essentially I'm just trying to highlight the fact that it doesn't need to be a small company for it to run into problems. There are all these massive conglomerates that exist, not just in China, but all around the world, and one could take down the other. I wanted to highlight actually what HNA Group is all about. You can see in this Wikipedia entry, they actually show you the different companies that they have a stake in, their ownership of those companies, when it all happened. They linked all the sources here. This just gives you an idea of how big this company is, okay? When you look through here, you find they own part of Deutsche Bank. They have a stake there. They have so many. If I scroll down here, I would actually might be able to find some of these. You just look through equity investments, their different acquisitions over the different years. They have stake in companies in New Zealand, in Switzerland. They've got a part of Hilton. They've got connections in Brazil. I mean, 
everywhere across the world, it seems like this company is there. It's pervasive. It has its hands everywhere. And you need to understand what this means, that if a company this big can have some failures, it can start to escalate and that can spread out. And that's when you have to watch out. There are dangers that are not immediately present to most people because they say, look at that market cap. The market cap of that company is X number and therefore I don't need to worry. It's big. It'll get bailed out and so on. We don't know what's going to happen. Anything can happen. If history has taught us anything, it's that there are always surprises waiting for us. The amount of debt that these corporations have got themselves into, whether they're big or small, it doesn't ever seem to surprise me how vast, how big this can really get. And you know that debt is always 100% of the time, it's a problem. It's to a bigger degree or smaller, but it's always going to be a problem. HNA Group has been offloading assets since late 2017 to pay down a staggering amount of debt from investments made during an acquisition spree, and it's a process that looks set to drag on for some time. They just go on further very quickly here to talk about debt pressures showing no signs of letting up. After its highly leveraged acquisition spree, the cash strap group now has no choice but to start peddling some of its core aviation businesses. Analysts say that further downsizing is needed. Needed, but negotiating the right price will be immensely challenging. They want to sell their non-strategic assets first and so on. There's more details in there if you want to read it. I'm going to move on. HNA Group to sell stake in Hong Kong firm to Blackstone for nearly $1 billion just showing you what they're doing. They're spreading everything out. They're huge, obviously, in the world. They went too far, too thin, and so they have to backpedal, and now they're struggling under all of that debt. It was a big mistake on their part to maybe go this far, this fast, and this is what happens. This is all I'm trying to show you. I'm just trying to give you an idea of how this could be for other companies out there. H&A Group tells warring Hong Kong Airlines parties to behave as battle for control of airline continues. This is a fight that apparently doesn't end but this is just something i wanted to show you again interconnected with that i'm going to end the video there if you want to check out what's going on inside china's shadow banking industry wait to the end of this video i'm going to mention it to you but if you wanted to support me and support this channel please give me a thumbs up i really do appreciate that if you want the financial education you weren't taught in school these two books have everything you need from a to z the foundation history the asset classes making money so much more check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to find out about China's 32 trillion, yes, trillion dollar secret, click on this video and I will see you there.